Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. This one uh, starts with a bit of a, a whiplash because I actually started playing before I realized I wasn't recording. But you didn't miss much. I pretty much just left the house and uh, in search of some valuable ores. And, uh, you know, look forward to that. I mean, like, that's going to be the theme of the next few episodes is in search of va valuable materials. Um, you know, things like tin, uh, things like even like salt is a thing I'm going to be searching for. Um, lime, uh, like really just like necessary uh, materials that I'm having just the, the worst time trying to find. But uh, the theme of this episode is going to be building a roof, um, putting a roof over our head. We are rapidly moving into winter time um, and it's getting colder and if you don't have a roof over your whole over your head then uh you will start freezing um and uh, you know if you continue to freeze you will die so uh as much as death doesn't have a very big penalty on me i would like to live uh you know play the game as if i am trying to survive so we're we're going to be building up the house and over the next few episodes the house the house or the cottage or whatever it is I plan on calling it um, is going to be undergoing some major improvements and upgrades and it's going to start to feel a little bit more like uh, a place that I live in and less of a just a, a theory or a concept that I um, aim to you know improve so there's our first problem is we've got ourselves a temporal storm not temporal storm but temporal gateway whatever they're they're called portal uh spawning inside of our house that's because it's too dark in our house so we gotta make some lanterns that unfortunately uses up a bit of our fat but um it's not like we're using the fat for anything else we can use it to um you know do leather tanning but that's another thing we're going to be working on um is tanning leather without the use of fat that is a lengthy and um very in-depth process and I don't actually have the resources to do it yet but it's nonetheless it's something I'm going to attempt to improve but anyway now the house or the cottage is um, looking looking a little bit less dim it's still pretty dim the oil lamps um, the, the main benefit of the oil lamps is they never go out unlike torches but they don't have a huge range of light uh, and you can see actually enemies are spawning on our roof uh, and right now when the, the roof is half built, that's kind of a problem because basically we're, we're getting rained. It's raining dwellers as it, as it is. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a problem and, uh, I'm, I'm working as quickly as I can to fix this problem, but you know, it's, it's everything's a process. I, I've been, uh, I mean, I generally play with uh, a friend in discord watching me play the game and. I, I kind of describe everything in Vintage Story is a is a process. You can't you can't rush anything. Nothing in in Vintage Story can really be shortcut or or like solely focused on. Like that is that's sort of the nature of survival. You you have to make sure you're tending to uh, a lot of different things at once. And I'm already a person who is prone to getting distracted. So uh, Vintage Story is sort of the perfect storm for make basically providing me with very efficient distractions um, so I never tend to focus on one task and that makes um, doing a let's play pretty difficult but I, because I think that um, you know something uh, uh, sort of a strength of a episode or a, or a let's play is having some kind of theme or you know single focus so you know this this uh, episode we're building a roof but there's many many other things going on including me trying to uh put the cellar together so now we have shelves in the cellar um i really like these shelves but they are not long for this world um the cellar is a ongoing process like anything else and um uh, eventually i will attempt to improve it upgrade it um if it is you know just functionally improving or uh aesthetically improving aesthetics are something i kind of struggle with i'm not much of an architect when it comes to um these kind of games voxel based games uh it's something i really do want to work on 
in this series because I do want to end up with something aesthetically pleasing when it comes to finishing this cottage. So I have a couple of concept references in mind when I'm designing, but right now and for the next few episodes, I understand it's basically just going to look like a big old warehouse and not very pleasing. But, um, you know, trust me, it is something I'm going to be working on. And we will eventually end up with something that isn't just a big old rectangle in the middle of the field. Um, so I uh, I don't take this for granted. So I'm, I'm like, you know, I've played a few sessions since uh, editing this uh, episode and berries are not something I take for granted anymore. Berries are long gone now. <laughs> Spoiler alert, uh, winter is well upon me, and, um, you know, these these last couple of berries, which I kind of end up squandering, um, are, are a blessing, and they, ooh, I forgot, I forgot about falling into this little cavern. This is really good, what happened here, <laughs> is I uh, fall into this cavern, and uh, I'm like, okay, what do I do? How do we get out of here? All right, dig up. Well, we just dig, dug up into a pond. And then, of course, the dwellers that were chasing us, um, you know, come down. So I end up switching places here. First was one dweller and then the other. And, uh, yeah, so he ends up down there and I end up coming back up here. But that doesn't matter because where, where am I going? Where am I jumping? Oh, back into the cavern. <laughs> Really good, just solid A plus work right here. Is me jumping into the cavern several times, and I can't even get out because you can't um, you can't really swim up stream like you can in Minecraft. I know I just did, but it doesn't always work. It's there's a, you get a like a, a one little burst of energy and then that's it. So if you didn't make it up the stream in that burst of energy, then you are kind of just waiting, uh, not waiting, waiting. Um, and uh, so I had to kind of climb, dig my way up. Uh, no, no, dig up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so I <laughs> plug that hole right away so I don't jump into it again. And I don't think there's much of value down there, but I could be wrong. So we're, uh, I'll be chopping down a lot of maple trees. You're going to see that on and off again. Um, oh, and, and also dying to many wolves. Get ready for that. Uh, the reason being for that is I wanted maple to be kind of our go-to wood when it came to, um, you know, building in the cottage. Like, I want the walls to be basically granite, clay stone, but I want the interiors or anything that is, you know, made from wood to be made out of maple. Um, so that that was the intention. I want, you know, it's good to have a couple of rules when when you're working on something because then that leads to co uh, consistency and consistency makes things a bit more aesthetically pleasing I think but um, anyway so I am chopping down a bunch of maple trees for the sake of getting maple wood um, but you'll see me also chop down plenty of other things so here I am trying to puzzle out leather working um, leather working is something I'm going to uh, be able to do better once I have lime and I don't really have lime the best I have right now are a couple of sea critters which I have ground up into uh, lime powder so with that lime powder I then combine it with water to make lime water um, and then I can basically um, soak one hide it's leather working is a little bit confusing because there's hides and then there's pelts uh, I believe hides are what you get from animals, and then pelts are what you make um, when you basically combine a hide with fat and then let it to dry out in a um, barrel. And then you can use that to create some very basic, uh, you know, like, you know, fur coats and stuff, fur gloves. Um, but it means using up fat, and I don't really want to do that because fat is useful for many other things, which we will get to eventually. So the other way of making leather is to make lime water, um, and then you soak the hide, and then it becomes soaked hide. Then you have to scrape it, scrape it with a knife, and it becomes a scraped hide. Then you have to tan it with weak tannin, which is water soaked with oak, um, or combined with oak. And then you have to, after, after the leather or the hide has become weak, 
like weakly tanned, um, you can then soak it in strong tannin. Um, and strong tannin is basically weak tannin, which has had more oak combined with it. All of this takes a lot of time. And if you want to have a lot of leather, you're gonna have to have a lot of this stuff on the go. So my plan is eventually to have an entire room dedicated to uh, tanning leather uh, and leather working because like, you know, it, you have to, you have to make the weak tannin, then you have to make the strong tannin. So you may as well have a couple of barrels dedicated to those. If you want to have more than one hide on the go, then it's good to have like a whole set of these things. So like one wall of pure weak tannin, a whole wall of pure strong tannin, and then probably a whole wall of lime water. So all of this assumes that you have lime and I have not been able to find it. It is a uh, rock material that it occurs in a specific kind of biome. And as much as I've been trying my best, I have not been able to find that kind of biome. So uh, this whole process has really been um, a struggle and trial. Uh, it is just the luck of the draw and it is um, down to how the world was generated and I generated a difficult world to, to, to live in and that is creating some unexpected challenges. But I think that leads to maybe the entertainment of the series of trying to survive in this kind of environment. So I hope that you do enjoy that. So we finally got to, I'm making some more pies, but I also realized that you can customize them, which is kind of fun. I really love those kind of details um, and touches, touches of detail when it comes to um, this game. I, there's my wine that I accidentally sealed. But, uh, you know, the nice thing about wine, um, there's, a, there's a couple of things. You can make wine from berries or juice, I guess, um, but that... Uh, that doesn't have as much nutrition as the juice it has some uh, but the nice thing about it is it keeps it for far longer and then eventually you can make brandy but brandy has no nutrition basically uh, or at least not very much berry nutrition it has calories so it is worth having but it, it doesn't have any of the actual fruit nutrition that you need um, here's our temporal storm I was asked to include a bit more of this effect um, if you're curious about the temporal storms, all I'll say is that they're kind of boring. Like, uh, it's just, they just spawn a lot of creatures where creatures are prone to spawning. So basically where there is no light. So fortunately I have a light in my house and so therefore no monsters end up spawning here. The weird temporal effect is, is interesting. It's very wavy and weird. Um, uh, and it kind of adds a weird wobbly dissonant effect to uh, the, your sound and I think music, maybe just the sound. But either way, that's that's the temporal storms. Um, and they also wear on your gear. Uh, the gear is at the bottom middle and you will kind of have to worry about that at a certain point. I have only undergone medium, light and medium temporal storms and I have never gotten anywhere close to seeing that uh, temporal gear like drain completely. I think when it does, then you get teleported to the rust world, which is uh, an interesting and novel experience, but it's not something I really want to experience just yet. Here's me toying around with the chisel again. Uh, the chisel is going to become a major player in the customization of this cottage in making it uh, feel more like a cottage. And, uh, I really wanted to give these the corner walls a bit of trim, so therefore I'm, that's why I'm putting this maple wood in the corner. I just have the one corner, and spoiler alert, I'll just I'll continue to have just the one corner for the next three episodes. So if that bothers you, I'm sorry. I'm like I say, I'm working on other things, and I'm prone to distraction, but I will eventually get to it. That is a that is a big simple promise right there, bud. Um, so after the temporal storm, you know, wanes, then, uh, you know, you tend to have a bit of a congregation out waiting for you outside. So you gotta, you can either run away from your house and do some chores out in the wilderness, like gathering wood or supplies, and then wait for them to despawn, which is the most risk-free option. Or uh, you can 
fight them out and your generally your reward for doing so is maybe a little bit of extra flax fiber which is uh actually you know kind of worth it if you do get it and i did get lucky at some point uh, and get a rusty gear, but that'll be in the future. Here's me trying to prospect. Prospecting is something I do not figure out for quite a long time. So this is me trying desperately to figure out how prospecting works. The reason I don't have it figured out yet in this episode is because I haven't figured out that there is a secret second option to how you prospect. And it's not even something that is automatically or normally, or sorry, by default uh, enabled. You have to enable it with a command. Um, this isn't really a tutorial series, but I can go through it once I, uh, once we get to that episode, but basically it means that you switch from figuring out how, what kind of resources are available in the chunk, uh, if you know what, it, if, if you're familiar with how chunks generate in these kind of games, um, so that would be like basically, um, I forget the term, but that's one form is you, f you know, the percentage value of like, uh, what kind of metals or resources have spawned in that chunk and then the other form is it will tell you if you are within uh, You know like eight blocks of certain materials like copper tin bismuth um, So that's the other one and that one is really important if you plan on Trying to find materials because mining in vintage story is much much different from Minecraft, as I say, you can't really just mine in a direction and hope for the best because uh, materials, uh, resources, ores, they're much less common in this in vintage story than they are in Minecraft. And uh, your pickaxe is much more valuable. So you're much better off trying to figure out how to suss out where the resources are rather than just kind of blindly digging through the earth because that's not going to get you anything and you're just going to burn through your pickaxes. It's also gonna burn through your life, like your real world life, like how much time you're spending playing the game and trying to get some tin. I, I, I mean, I've been using the prospecting pick and I, I haven't even you know, like been able to see signs of tin so imagine if i was just digging through the ground hoping for the best and finding nothing that would be seriously a you know buzzkill i do have a mod installed by the way which allows gives me those purple squares um, and that just ensures that i don't have to mark on the map what kind of resources are available uh i can let you know which mods i have installed if that is of interest to you but basically if you look up anything about using the prospector's pickaxe most videos will recommend this mod to you it's very easy to to find um it's like the most common and uh well liked one here's me trying to get salt this will be a thing that i get very salty about haha <laughs> tee um but it, it's not something I end up succeeding at. Um, I think I get pretty close at certain points, but um, yeah, salt would be really good for a number of things, mostly for preservation of food, uh, including making like jerkies and stuff like that. Um, well, I guess, I don't know. Is salted meat the same as jerky? No, probably not. Um, I believe, yeah, I was it, I think my friend said it was, um, Jerky is smoked, and then uh, salted meats are salted. I mean, that makes sense, right? Well, I mean, technically you could salt jerky. Why not? Tell me tell me you couldn't salt a jerky. Tell me. Anyway, this is the last berries you'll see me collect. Um, and, yeah, I mean... Oh, and, and this was a really nice discovery. I managed to find some suvite. Suvite is a indication of an impact zone which is an indication of meteorite, uh, meteor meteoric iron. And meteor meteoric iron is very important for the late game, although I won't be able to take advantage of it for quite a long time. As you can see, I need at least a tier four iron pickaxe in order to claim um, the, the stuff. So it won't be for a long time that I'm able to make use of that. Um, Meteor in all caps, love that. And I managed to find some brown coal. Brown coal will become useful and important as well. Um, although I don't know if I take advantage of that for quite a while either. 
you're going to see me kind of floundering in the next few episodes. I am in a, a slight growing pains between um, tiers of technology. I, I don't know what you could call say I'm in. I'm not quite in the Bronze Age because I don't technically have any bronze. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to get to the next phase. But anyway, there's our uh, soaked hide. And then I can scrape it with a knife and that makes a scraped hide. Let's see me do that. There it is with a knife, bingo bongo, scraped hide. And eventually we will turn that into a leather scrap. A single, singular leather scrap, which will become useful for something very specific, but I will not spoil what. Um, but there's our uh, a little bit more lime powder. We really don't have basically any lime powder, so I can't really do much. Um, and there's me throwing, throwing the rest of our food in, in these... Uh, vessels which do uh, quite a bit for preservation um and making a bit more juice i think this is the last of the juice that i end up making i think that, that, i'm not sure if that's blueberry or something i can't remember and i throw the rest of our like mining supplies uh into the, the smithy chest i do uh really appreciate the look of the cellar as it is now um, but it does, it will change quite dramatically and I kind of like what it becomes, but anyway, that'll do it for this episode with a roof over our head as we rest our weary head. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit that like button and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.